a lot of you young uh, <laughs> reporters, you kids. Uh, I'm just yeah, an, yeah. I'm an old guy. I I look at Mahomes and I'm like, yeah, this is the way it works. All these guys are up and down. I mean, Russell Wilson entered the league with the greatest defense ever, and now they can't tackle. Like it's just the way the world works. I don't think Mahomes. I mean, I guess I'll ask you. I he's a little sloppier. Is he trying to do too much? In your opinion, do you think he is trying to overcome an egregiously bad defense? Yes, I do, because this defense is so bad historically. <laughs> I went through 20 years. I'm serious. Like Right now, I think they're allowing 7.1 yards per play by wow. the opponent. Wow. And I went through 20 years of data because it's not tracked all the way back, and no one's been worse. So you know, a third of the season, you could argue statistically we've never seen a defense perform as poorly as the Chiefs are. So I think when I'm watching him, just like you are, like I'll notice little things with Mahomes. You know, one of the crazy things about him, if you watch him at Texas Tech, you're like, okay, big arm, this kid's incredible, but why is he making some of these throws? And he knew because they were giving up like 60 points every week, yeah. 12. So I wasn't sure about him as, as a prospect, like a lot of other people were, because I couldn't understand the decision making. And then when you learn more about Mahomes, you're like, actually, this guy's brilliant. He knew he had to force the issue all the time because of how Texas Tech's defense was. Now, it's not... I wouldn't say we're at that point right now with the Chiefs. The Chris Jones didn't play last week. They were missing another starting corner. I mean, the defense can't be this bad, but I do feel like there are moments. And I was talking with Dilfer about it this week on my show, and you know, I know you had him on as well, where he's so amazing as a loose player that you know some guys are loose and you're like, hey, tighten it up a little bit. He, this is the loosest I think I've ever seen him. But I think there's also now another rush to be like, wait, what's going on? I heard you doing it a little bit this week, too, yeah. Colin, where it's like, maybe I'd like Herbert. Let's not lose our minds here. He's still <laughs> the best quarterback in the NFL. And nobody's – I don't think – I wouldn't take anyone to be surpassing him anytime soon. Yeah. I, I do, by the way, I will say this. Uh, Herbert um, is really, really good. And it's, yeah. cool, it's cool that they're both in the same division. Um, I, I've said before, the mantle, the rings, yeah, Mahomes gets that. Do you think there's an argument to be made if you and I were to start today, we went out for a beer, we wrote down the 10 best quarterbacks, you start looking at Lamar, boy, he's moved up a lot of slots recently, and I do think Herbert, we're waiting to annoy him, and I'm like, I'm watching him, Ryan, he's really sensational now, like where, I mean, how, how far back is Herbert from Mahomes, in your opinion? I still think Mahomes is in his own tier. I mean, that's how special he, I think he is. And, you know, I was listening to your Open on Monday, all sorts of anticipation. I got to bed early just to make sure I'd be up for it. And <laughs> I was listening to you kind of, you know, like there's, there's a rule in how we'll do, you know, hey, Bama could have way less titles. You know, they could also have more, too. You know, when you ever you look at Belichick and Brady with the Patriots, you go, you know, they could actually have a lot less. OK, they could also have more if a couple Giants plays don't go that way. So when you were talking about Mahomes, you were like, you know, they've been outplayed in all the Super Bowls. You know, if you really start thinking about it. Yeah, but we're also an offsides away from this guy being in three straight Super Bowls. Right. You know, that also could have happened. So I think whenever you're doing that exercise, you also have to pivot it the other way. And even though I love what Herbert's done and Lamar, I mean, this week, you're going to be kidding me. I mean, he was one of my favorite guys I ever watched in college, the way he took over a game and the way that we've been critical of, hey, if Lamar gets down, can he really carry you back? Well, he did it again. It was the Colts. But that's another part of the test for him and being in that top tier. But as, as far as it stands right now, I'm still not even willing to put anyone in Mahomes' class. You know, I was saying this when I used to live in Connecticut, Ann and I, my wife, we went on a lightning storm. We would go outside, and you know, I I, I didn't grow up exciting in a, times. It was well, it's Connecticut, but I didn't grow up in a state with lightning, and so I'd never <sighs> seen like these electrical storms. And I said they're a little like Lamar Jackson. I don't know how great he is, but I don't know how great lightning is. But it's the best weather because it's you can sit and watch it. Fascinating to sit and watch it. You don't know how it's going to end. It is just like art, and you're like in the end, you're like, whoo, what I can feel it. And Lamar Jackson, I don't know where to rank him. But I can't take my eyes off him. He is the most electric player I think I've seen in ten years. I don't even know. What, I don't even know how to describe him. Yeah, Lamar. What was always amazing about him in college too is that he would he would do some kind of QB keeper, and we'd be talking like at the one yard line, right? So all everybody's bunched up. It's goal line set, and he would just take one step this way, and everybody would freak out, and he would be untouched on a QB keeper at the goal line. I mean, his, his make you miss, and we're not talking about the smallest guy here. You know, DeAnthony Thomas was somebody at Oregon when he was in college. I go, I don't think I've ever seen anyone get a clean hit on him. Now, I would put, for as much as we're, we're talking about Lamar here and, and the excitement, because I'm in total agreement, and he may be the most important player in the entire NFL to his team's success. Yeah. 
But Kyler Murray's doing some things oh, as wow. well yeah. physically that I, you know, I agree with you on Lamar, but I'd have to put Kyler Murray in that group with him. You know, it's interesting. I talked to Steve Kime, the GM, this week, and I said, you literally pivoted off a coach and a quarterback in one year. Nobody does that. And I asked him, I said, when did you know Kyler was great? What was the moment on film? And he talked about a play against Alabama, second half. He threw off one foot, and he's like, I got up from the tape, and I'm like, all right, we're going to draft him. <laughs> I mean, literally, there was a play. He's like, he goes, I've been a scout forever. I, I never seen anything like it. it the, the, the Kyler thing, do you worry at all that he runs so much that he, and he's smaller? Let's say, anything you worry about with him? Well, of course, because when you look at the shoulder injury last year, I think their offense and they were two different teams. And I think a lot of it had to do with his injury. But the one thing that I do love about him, and and I'll even use Saturday's examples, right, because we both watch a lot of college ball. I think a lot of the quarterbacks grow up with really clean pockets. They get rid of the ball quicker. They're not facing chaos as much as maybe they would have in previous generations. And when I'm watching somebody kind of roll out to the right, they feel a little pressure and they roll out to the right. And you can already tell they have no plan, right? It's they're waiting for the guy to get free at the sideline or they're going to try to run it for three or four yards because half of the field is now completely out of the play because they felt a little pressure pressure and they rolled out. And we see it on Sundays too, you know, with some of the younger guys. They roll out without much of a plan. Kyler rolls out. Colin, and then he resets himself almost in the play and keeps the field wide open. He resets himself and they'll get back up into whatever version of the pocket still even exists. And I think that's actually really rare for some of the guys that have his physical abilities. You know, the the best... The reason we're seeing teams go for it on fourth down, the reason we're seeing so many aggressive teams offensively is because we just have a better athlete now across the board playing in the NFL. But, as we know, the running part is nice, but eventually to carry your team over the course of a full season and deep and hopefully into a Super Bowl, you got to figure out how to still beat people out, you know, whether it's a rolling pocket or staying in the pocket. And I see things with Kyler as a young guy where I go, you know, he's already figured that part of it out. He's rolling out with a plan where other guys roll out with no plan. You know, I, I, with Baker Mayfield, final question, I'm a little critical of him, so I'm going to hand this to you. It's not the third and ten the more I thought about it. It's not the run play. It's with a minute 26 left and no timeouts – you didn't understand the value of the sideline, the value of going downfield. I really do think the general manager has a decision to make, Ryan, and I look at some of his late game stuff, and I think it's bad. I think that drive really hurt him. I really do. Your thoughts? Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, the numbers back you up as well. It was one of the first things I looked at with the game this past weekend where I go, what's going on with him? Because I've watched a bunch of the games where I go, what are his numbers in the fourth quarter? And if you look at the completion percentage and the QB rating, it's gone down in the fourth quarter. Now, is that who he is? Um, you know, I'm not willing to go there, uh, but that's who he's been to this point. He had some possessions late against the Chiefs where it's like, look, we need more than three and out. Uh, and it happened again last weekend where it's like, you know, even though they're putting up a ton of points and it's hard to argue with the Browns as an offensive product in that shootout, but there were some late possessions there where I think it was – you know, 20 something yards on eight plays in the final two possessions, of three minutes to go. So he's got to fix that for this team to be as good as we think they can be. And as far as the GM, you know, a lot of times when you're paying for quarterbacks, it's an insurance policy. It's not so much that you believe in the guy, it's that you believe there aren't better options. Right. So I think the contract will come down to what the guaranteed money is because the overall headline on this deal is going to be a massive deal. It probably will be because that's how it works. It's the timing of the quarterback deals, not necessarily who the quarterback is. If I said Ryan Rosillo, one minute on the clock on Kyrie Irving, where would you take it? <laughs> one minute on Kyrie Irving. All right. Um, let, let me do this. I, I saw the video like everybody else did. I could go through every line here and, and talk about the things where he contradicts himself. You know, he'd said that he was promised all these things. The NBA couldn't promise him anything. This is a New York City thing, so I don't understand that part of it. Um, I also think this is a curious pivot because I think it's somewhat tactical where he's saying he's a voice for the voiceless and it's not even necessarily about the vaccine. I think he got beat up so much that he was like, okay, now i got to figure out some new concept to get everybody back on my side. Right. Um, He said, don't pay attention to everything. Well, he clearly hasn't paid attention to anything because he himself has said, I couldn't believe this is, you know, I can foresee this coming. I wasn't able to prepare. Where have you been the last year and a half? All right. Like we're all dealing with something here. Now, granted, if his choice is that he doesn't want to get vaccinated, then he doesn't have to play. I mean, it's, it's that simple. But I think there's a part of him that he seems to enjoy this, this, this like almost martyr status where, you know, why is it always about me? Why is this all on me? Hey, the reason we care about you is because you're awesome at basketball and you're on a team that could potentially win a championship. And you're so talented and the team is so good. And now that changes the story with your availability. And that's what we do. These are the rules. You know, I, I know it's not always fair. And he said something where, like, we don't even have to play basketball. We're spending more time with our family. It's a pretty good gig. 
I'm sure you know it's, it's, it's not a bad gig. Uh, if he wants to w- walk away from 200 million, that's his choice. That's fine. Like I, I'm not even, you know, it's not personal. I'm not even emotional about it all. It's just that there's always a moment where I'll have where I feel like, okay, are you? If you're trying to prove to me how enlightening you are, and and you're not doing a good job, there's going to be a level of where I I probably am stuck. I'll just stop listening to you. Yeah, that was more than a minute, but I really liked it. I enjoyed that completely from beginning to end. I knew. Yeah. There, there was no way. Yeah, I minute, tried. Minutes unrealistic. Uh, Ryan Rochelle, the Ringer. Good seeing you, buddy. Thanks, Colin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.